Amen. Well, good morning and praise the Lord. Truly, it's good to be here on this morning. I'm bringing you greetings again from uh, Dominion Tabernacle, taken by Force Ministries. It's always good to have you all tune in with us on today. And we're glad to have you uh, with us. Just a few uh, housekeeping issues, uh, housekeeping matters. Uh, we encourage you to please check out our website, www.takeitbyforce.net. On there, you can find our YouTube channel and you can have access to uh, some of our inspirational messages that we've been able to offer. And so we encourage you to please check that out. Uh, we feel that you will find some messages on there that will be very encouraging to you and encourage your, your family and friends to please uh, check us out on there. Also, uh, there's an opportunity on there for you to, to donate to the ministry. We're always thankful for those individuals who, who the Lord lays upon their heart to uh, sow into the ministry, and so we don't take it for granted, but truly we invite you all to please uh, join us as we continue to move forward and do that which the Lord has called us, us to do. On this morning, we want to go right ahead and, and, and jump right into the word of the Lord on this morning. If you would find in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and uh, we're going to be looking at verse number verse number five. Now, really, this is this morning, this is the three-part installation of a message that we've been talking about over the past few weeks. And so if you have not had a chance to listen. To the first two messages, well, again, this is a good opportunity for you to check out our YouTube channel because we do have uh, those previous two messages already listed on there for you. But over the past few weeks, we've been dealing with 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, down there at verse uh, number 5, verse number 5 there, where the Apostle Paul here, he says there in verse number 5, not that we are sufficient. Another word for sufficient is competent of ourselves to think anything as ourselves. And this is what we've really been uh, dealing with here in verse number five. But our sufficiency, but our sufficiency, our competence, our credibility is of God. And God is he who has made us able ministers able ministers of the New Testament. And so I want to continue to talk about uh, the limitation of my competence, the limitation of my competence. And what we've been trying to establish and realize and understand, and this is what we said on last week, that competence is a collaboration. It is a collaboration between uh, the individual and God. And oftentimes, in a collaboration, we look to see what is being brought to the table. And so we said that oftentimes when you're trying to establish creditability, uh, creditability being a word that we've been talking about and dealing with, when something is credible, it's trustworthy. When something is credible, uh, it has a good record. It has a, 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 a good reputation. And so when you look to establish credit ability within the marketplace among men, uh, you often bring knowledge, skill, and exercise to the table. Oftentimes those ideas are considered to be hard skills or, or those skills that are represented outwardly, the outward appearance, okay? But then what we said, now, when, you, when you're talking about God, all right, you, you, He's not really he's not necessarily concerned in knowledge, skill, or experience. Rather, you have to bring something to the table that gets his attention. And what we said on last time was that that which gets God's attention is faith. And so then when you're dealing with God, you have to have faith enough to believe, as Hebrews 11, 6 says, believe first of all that he is. And not only that he is, but he, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so then the idea, when you look at it, when you look at it, you're talking about credit ability. In other words, increased capacity. Uh, Lord, give me or increase or add to me the capacity 
to put my ability, my ability being that which God envisions for my life, the purpose for my life, Lord, give me what I need. And, and what you need, it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary resources, but it can be networking resources. Uh, but give me what I need in order to accomplish what it is you have called me to do. And that's what creditability with God is. It's having faith enough. Faith enough to participate in the vision God gives you. I have it written here on the board. When you have faith enough to participate in the vision, which means you have to know what God's vision is for your life. You have to know what it is. God, want, what God, what do you want to do with my knowledge? God, what do you want to do with my skill level? God, what do you want to do with the experience? Now, you know, and we all, our target audience, of course, is youth and young adults. And so young adults that are listening, if you're out there and you're, you're on your way to college, you're a senior in high school, getting ready to graduate, getting ready to start pursuing some type of degree. Or maybe you may already be in college listening to us on this morning and you are in pursuit of a degree. You are in pursuit of some type of trade of skill, some type of trade or some type of knowledge base. The question becomes then, Lord, what is the vision? What do you want to do with my degree once I get it? Once I get it? What do you want to do with the experience that I'm, I am putting underneath my belt? Because I'm not just adding to my life to be adding to my life, but Lord, I want to add something of value to my life that you can utilize to help achieve your purpose for my life. Which again, that goes back to the individual must understand what God's vision is for his or her life. And then once you understand what your vision is, once you understand what God's purpose is for your life, okay, then you are able to pray to that effect. God, give me what I need so that I can accomplish your vision. But you have to have faith in them to participate in the program. That's where credibility with God comes in. Having faith enough to participate in the vision God gives you and believe that he will credit, he will add to you what is needed to get that vision or to get that job done. Now, now I, I want to continue to move forward here because when you talk about creditability and you talk about faith and utilizing your faith in relationship with God, I think one particular character that comes into mind that you can't help but mention is the character of Abram. Abram, who eventually went on, whose name was changed to Abraham. But before his name was changed to Abraham, it's worth going back and looking at his life earlier on. Now, I said earlier, you know, there are two types of credibility. There's credibility among men, and then there's credibility among, well, there's credibility with God. Now, credibility among men, again, it's, it's uh, focused on skill, knowledge, and experience. Okay. And also, really, credibility among men oftentimes is based upon the physical. It's based upon the physical. Simply put, it's based upon, and we said it already, the outward. The outward. Now that makes sense. That makes sense. Remember what God told Samuel when Samuel went to look for a king. A replacement for King Saul. And he went down to Jesse's house. And Jesse had some sons. What did Samuel, what, did, what advice did God give to Samuel? He said, Samuel, do not look. Man looks at the what? Outward. 
Yes, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Man looks at the skill. Samuel, look at how much experience. Don't look at their skill level. Man looks at knowledge. Samuel, don't worry about how much knowledge they have in leadership. Man looks at experience. Well, how much experience? Samuel, don't look at the experience. Oh, well, here's it, the physical. Samuel, don't look at their physical stature. Because the brothers that were, were in the room when Samuel got there, you know, those were the ones that Jesse thought, well, if anybody is going to replace King Saul, one of these men are. Because Jesse thought they had the what? Skill, knowledge, experience, and physical stature, physical height, physical dimensions that would represent what a king ought to be. But God went in the opposite direction. He said, don't look. He said, man looks at the outward. And see, the challenge is we spend most of our time trying to establish that which God is not even looking at. Amen. We live in a day and time where we focus on our credibility among men and we look at increasing our skill base, our knowledge base, our experience and base, and our physical base, of which helps to build up the outward. God's not looking at that. He said, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at what? The heart. The end. Credibility with God begins with this right here. Begins with the what? Inward. And after, and after those brothers came through and passed by, Lord said, no, 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 no. Samuel said, you got anybody else? And Jesse he said, yeah, I got you out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the younger one. And he's out in the back, tending the sheep, tending the flock. All right, go get it. Mm -hmm. Go get it. Oh, David came in. Mm -hmm. Don't mind none of this. Here. He was a young looking dude. Probably half the size of his older brother. Not even close. One that if you looked at the outward appearance, mm -hmm. You would have just overlooked it and kept right on moving. Kept right on going. Well, guess what? God said that's the one. Amen. Don't worry about who overlooked you. Amen. When in comparison to others, you may be the smallest of the small. The tiniest of the tiny. But do you not know Oftentimes, that's the one God is looking to utilize. Mm. Why? Because they don't have nothing yet to fall back on. Mm. Come on now. David was a man after God's own heart. Now, does that mean he was perfect? No, it doesn't. But at the end of the day, God knew and understood that David was a credible individual. Who came with liabilities? Absolutely, we all do. But he was credible enough that he felt that David would be was able enough. He looked at David at his youth and looked beyond his youth and saw that this was a man that could get the job done. Amen. Why? Because God sees further than me. Why? Because God goes beyond the outward. And he focuses in on the inward because he knows that the inward is what's going to is what's going to help you right here. 
Now I said all that to say this because, because see, during the time of Jesus, that Jesus' time, and really during from that time on, as they were beginning to establish the, the church, lay the foundation for the church, and during Paul's uh, missionary uh, journeys, and during his time when he was establishing churches and establishing his ministry work. The, this was oftentimes the greatest obstacle facing the gospel, right here. Right here. Jesus had to contend with this right here. Yes. He had, right here. He had to contend with the skill, the knowledge, and the experience of the chief elders, the scribes, Pharisees and the religious system. Mm -hmm. A system that prided themselves in what? The outward. Mm -hmm. That prided themselves in the law. The Torah. The law of Moses. Mm -hmm. And they utilized that law to help build up their credibility among men. Even when Paul came onto the scene, he had to deal with this issue right here. Because he in it because, because his opposers, a lot of his opposition, felt that the only way that you could be acknowledged among men as having a relationship with God was that you had to complete all of these outward laws and commandments. That God utilized that with the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But see here, but you have to realize, though, and understand that God was trying to do something different. Well, today, he was not trying to do away with his law. Well, his law is his word. Mm -hmm. What he was trying to do is make the law more relevant. Does that make sense? Yeah. We use this verb. We talk about this all the time. We talk about this all the time. Look in Jeremiah. We're going to turn to it again. Look, he's just trying to make the, make the law relevant. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse number 33. Really, verse 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a what? A new covenant with the house of Israel. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, which means it's not going to be of the same nature of the forefathers. And see here, during Jesus' time, all right, People, people were so hooked and connected to the, to, to the law that they did not want to embrace anything else. That's why when Jesus came along, they, some people, they couldn't, they couldn't, they, they couldn't keep with it. Because they were still, they were still stuck on the old covenant that was made with their fathers. But, but God says here in verse 32, according to the prophet Isaiah, that it's, it was going to be different from the covenant that was made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Now, verse 33, look down there. This lets us know what the difference is. Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law where? 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 Inward. Inward. God is moving from an outward focus to what? To an inward focus. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. God is interested in the inward. Yes.
So that was the job then that Jesus had when he came onto the scene was to help be an advocate to help promote the new covenant. Right. That God was trying to do something where? On the inside of the individual. Yes. That's why Paul said, let this what? Mind the inward. But this was the this was the opposition here. Yes. This was the opposition. Now, 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 when you look at the physical, when you look at the physical, when you look at the physical, one of the key, one of the key matters, one of the key pieces, especially during Paul's time, as it relates to the physical, would be Genesis 17. Genesis 17, where it talks about in there verses 10 through 12. Okay, Genesis 10 through 12. Now, let me uh, turn to that and read that for a minute. Because then we're talking about Abram. I hadn't forgotten where I was. We're talking about Abram. But understanding, understanding, however, that during Paul's time and during the time of Jesus, that, that this credibility among men, that it, was all, it oftentimes hinged upon hinged upon man's outward capacity. Right. And so in Genesis 17, this is one of the key arguments that was held uh, during that time, uh, there, Genesis 17, uh, verse 10 through 12. This is a covenant. Now, Abram, now it's important that you understand this. Abram was about 90 years old here. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about a youth or a young adult. You're talking about an old, old gentleman here. 90, 90 years old. 99, actually. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. God said to Abram, You shall keep my covenant. Therefore, you. And who? Thy seed after thee in what? In their generation. So now understand now. When Jesus comes along, he's going up against generations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's going back against generations that are rooted in this covenant that God made with Abram. When Paul comes along, he's going up against opposition. He's going up against generations that are rooted in verses 9, 10, 11, and 12. Yes. Verse 10, look at what it says. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep. Mm -hmm. And they did a good job of keeping it. Absolutely. So much so they did not want to let go of it. Between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. That is a physical requirement. Mm -hmm. Circumcision is of the physical, just with the physical nature of the body. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your support of your now. Now look what he says in verse 11. He says, and you, mm -hmm. ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And he's talking Abram. Mm. In verse 11, 17 and 11. Now it's important that you, that you see that. Physical requirement was placed, was placed upon him. At 99. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt who? Me and you. Verse 12. Now, and he that is eight days old mm -hmm. shall be what? Circumcised among you, every man, child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. Mm -hmm. So circumcision was a Prerequisite. Right. 
covenant agreement between God and Abel, house of Israel. So then, when Jesus comes along and Paul comes along, Starting to talk about inward. Repent. Let this mind. What are you talking about, Paul? What are you talking about, Jesus? We are of Abraham's seed. And so you, you know, you start talking about relationship with God, relationship with God. You gotta be circumcised. That's covenant relationship. And God gave that covenant relationship to our father Abraham, and we are who? We are Abraham's seed. So, so, so when they, so when Paul and, and this, this this idea of Christianity comes on the scene, talking about faith and talking about let this mind be in you, and talking about the heart of the individual, and, 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 and no wonder they had it rough. That 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 that, that they didn't like Jesus and, and Paul and his his assignment. Face opposition. Why? Because you were dealing with a generation of people who were focused on the what? On the outward. Yes. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as we look at Abel. That there's that that there was a deeply rooted belief that if you were going to have any type of credibility. Not only with man, but with God. Then you have to have all this right here in place, especially Genesis 17, 10 through 12. So we got that? Yes. All right, now let's 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 keep going here. So as I said at the offset here, when you talk about credibility, when you talk about faith, when you talk about relationship with God, one has to talk about Abram. So let's talk about him for a few minutes. Hit rewind. Go back to Genesis. Well, actually, turn back. Genesis 15. Okay, Genesis 15. Let's take a look at Abram for a minute here. Genesis 15. Actually, no, go back to Genesis 13. Let's establish, let's establish this first here. Genesis 13, 2. Genesis 13, 2. If you have it, say I have it. Now. Look what it says out there, Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Well, when he came out of Egypt, it was him, his wife, verse 1, all that he had, and his nephew, Lot, went with him. They traveled down to the south. Now, verse 2 is what I want you to see right there. Verse 2, it says, and Abram was very rich. In cattle, livestock in silver and gold. That's my first point right there in chapter 13, Genesis 13, verse 2. He was loaded. The thing to note about Abraham, you might want to write this down in your notes, he had much outward He had much outward substance. Abram had much outward substance. Now, again, we live in a day and time that promote the more substance you have, the more successful you are. Outward. The more knowledge, the more skill, the more experience, the more physical substance you have, the more powerful, the more influential, the more of an impact you have. But now, here, here's the thing. 
Don't be fooled by someone's outward substance. No matter how much substance they may have. Do not be fooled by someone's outward substance, regardless of how, how much substance it appears that they have. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Well, let's keep going. So we understand that he was rich, much cattle, much silver, much gold. But now let's take a look at Genesis 15 for a minute. Genesis 15. Still talking about Abram now. Still talking about a man who was filthy rich. Loaded down. Outloaded. Genesis 15 verse 1 it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a what? Vision. The key word there is vision. Do you see that word on my board anyway? Yes. Vision has to do with establishing what? Creditability with God. Yes, Lord. Doesn't it? Got to know what the vision is for your life. You got to know what God's vision is for your life if you expect to establish credit ability with God. If you want God's credit ability, then you got to know what God's plan is for your life. If you want man's credit ability, then you figure out what man's plan is or man's vision is for your life. Yes, Lord. Don't go after man's vision for your life utilizing God's credibility. Amen. Let me say that. Don't go after man's vision for your life trying to utilize or seeking God's credibility. Because at the end of the day, all you're trying to do is promote you. No, you pursue God's credibility when you're trying to pursue God's vision for your life. Because at the end of the day, it's not about you, but it's about how God was glorified through you. Amen. Amen. Go get the degree. But how can God utilize it in the marketplace to help improve somebody's value? Become a journalist. How is God going to utilize it? Become an engineer. How is God going to utilize it? Become a doctor. Become a lawyer. How is God going to utilize it? Whatever you're pursuing in life, you have to ask God, God, how are you going to utilize it for your glory? And the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying what? Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Letting Abraham know, I'm here for you. I got you. Now look at his response though. Look at his response down there. Now watch it. Now, now. Abram, who was what? Filthy rich, wasn't it? Load it down. 
Shouldn't he be on vacation somewhere? Shouldn't he be on a beach sipping margaritas in my time? Why in the world would a man with goats and cattle and silver be concerned about not having children? If anything, he wouldn't have to worry about a baby silver. All he would need to do is go on vacation. But he's concerned. God, I'm childless. God, y'all better go here and get me. I feel like I'm ready to explode. He was childless, but had everything. Go ahead. <laughs> Why was he concerned about being childless? Genesis chapter 13. Verse 14, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up thine eyes, Abram, and look from the place where there are northward and southward and eastward and westward. Verse 15 says, for all the land which thou seest to thee, I to thee, I will give it. But that wasn't the end of the conversation, was it? He said, and to the sea. Which meant there had to be somebody coming after him. And, 16, I will make thy seed, thy descendants, thy children as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can never the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. God had made Abram a promise that he was going to have some kids. So Abram realizes earlier on that my life is not just about me. It's about what God wants to do through me. Yes. So the fact that God said back here in Genesis 15, 16, that he was going to give Abram some children, but then here in, in chapter 6, 15, verse number 2, Abraham says, hold up, wait a minute. I'm still what? Childless. So why was that a concern for Abel? Because he was concerned about God's vision for his life. He was concerned about God's vision for his life. Yeah, he had the outlet. Yes. But he was still childless. He was concerned about God's vision for his life. That's why it mattered to him that he was childless. See, when, see, when you're concerned about God's vision, God's purpose for your life, you just can't live life like everybody else. Amen. You can't live life like the world. You just. Oh, Lord. You got to be different. Amen. Uh, uh, you Thank you, Lord. Yes. Woo, you got to be different. That's why they didn't like Jesus. Why? Because he was different. Why was Jesus different? Because Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You can't live like the world and expect to do God's will for your life. Preach. Ah! Preach it. Jesus was more concerned about pleasing his father than he was trying to please the outward brutalness of man. Yes, God. And when we get to a point in this point in life where we're no longer concerned about what people think of me outwardly, yes, Ah, oh, help us, help us, help us, help us, yeah, help us. Let me keep going, let me keep going, let me keep going. 
Go back to Genesis 15, 3, 15. What are you concerned about? Let me, let me just call it. Write that down in your notes. What am I concerned about? What am I concerned about? What am I concerned about? Am I concerned about my light bill being paid? Am I concerned about them coming and repossessing my car? Am I, am I concerned about them turning my lights off? What, what are you concerned about? Give it over to Jesus. Give it over to Jesus. You'll work it out. Okay. Utilize your stuff like you're supposed to. Come on now. <laughs> yes, come on. That's it. Woo! What did he tell Abraham? He said, I am thy shield. And thy exceedingly great reward. <laughs> you want to know how to hang on to your little stuff? Mm -hmm. Utilize your little utilize your little stuff to help somebody else. Somebody else. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Utilize your little stuff to help out somebody else. Yeah. Mm. Don't worry about it, God's gonna pay you back for it. Just go ahead and help somebody else. Mm. Don't worry about them putting your name in life. Just help somebody else. You know, God, he challenges me sometimes. You know, when I go out to the community and I do something and I say, I say, okay, I need to go put this on Facebook. God said, why? For what? Just do it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They ain't, ain't going to like it anyway. You need to be concerned about whether I like what you're doing. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. That's what he told me. So I, 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 I used to spend a lot of time posting, 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 posting. I don't post as much. Not that I post a lot to begin with, but you know, I'm not the fastest technologically advanced when it comes to stuff like that. But, you know. Amen. What I find myself doing now is I post these messages here. Amen. You, know, you want to post up the post that. Yes. Yes. Something that's gonna help. Yes, Lord. They ain't gonna get no help from you going up the street helping somebody. You help somebody across the street. Oh, let me post that. So why you help somebody across the street? But utilize the stuff that God gives you to help somebody else. Verse 3. Look at that. Look what's Abram. At verse 3. I'm still in Genesis 15, verse 3. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given me what? No seed. No seed. But you got cattle upon a thousand years. You got silver. You got gold. The crush strings are but. But I don't have no seed. I don't have anything to reproduce. Gold can't reproduce. Silver can't reproduce. Yeah, cattle can reproduce. But, but you're not going to use no cattle. You want human beings, Lord, to do your will. Well, he said, I'm going to not, and as the dust of the earth is, so shall thy seed be. God wasn't talking about oxen and camels and sheep and he was talking about human, fleshly, rational thinking beings. And he said, Lo, one that is in my house is one of my servants. And so I don't have it. <sighs> Abram was limited. <laughs> he was limited. He was limited. He was limited. Yeah, he was. He was limited. Watch this here. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir. But, now this is key. This is the vision. This is the vision that God was giving him. Yes. In verse number four, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels. Now, in some translations, 
translation of the word bowels, it may say body. In some translations, it may say inward parts. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, right here. The vision was God said, Abram, out, he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. So what that tells me then is that somewhere down the line, God is going to address this limitation. See, 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 see? Yeah. That's why you have the limitation so that you know that you need God's help. And isn't that what I started out saying when I started teaching this series? Yeah. Lord, I need your help. Your help. But you don't understand that until you reach your limit. And all of us in here, we got our limits. And if you think you don't have one, you keep living. And watch and see all the life. Oh, yes, it will. 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 But you're going to say, Lord, I need your help. Why? Because I reached my limitation, my confidence. I thought I had it all together. I thought I knew how to figure it out. But here I find myself clueless. Like Abram was childless, sometimes life will leave you clueless without a clue as to how to proceed next. Amen. Verse 5, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look. I like that word, look. Why? Because that implies vision. Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, so shall thy seed be. Yes. Now, verse 6 right here. And he Yeah. He believed. Yes, he did. But that, 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 that let me say We need to now. Here's your key. Here's the key. Here's he. Now, what I want to present to you at the point, at the point where he was in his life in verse number six, mm -hmm. he. Mm -hmm. Bypass all this right here. Come on. Especially this one right here. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. At Genesis 15 and 6, when it says, and he believed. Where was he? Right here, physically. When he chose to believe. Yeah, he was up there in age. But based upon Genesis 17, 10 and 12, Genesis 17, 10 and 12 had not happened yet. Uh, you got to get that. You got to get that. Because Genesis 17, 10, and 12 deals with what? Circumcision. In Genesis 15, he hadn't been circumcised yet. Had. No, he hadn't. So he didn't even meet that prerequisite right there. He bypassed that prerequisite right there and went straight into what? Because it said, and he believed his uncircumcised self had the audacity to believe God. Absolutely. Because he wasn't concerned about it. What? He didn't know. But even in that, though, what we see here, though, is that he immediately what? He was uncircumcised outwardly, but inwardly, his heart was circumcised. See, that's, that's the argument that Paul, that's the case Paul was trying to present. Circumcision is not so much of the flesh, but circumcision is of the what? Heart. That's 
why Abraham was characterized as being the father of faith. Because he bypassed the physical, the outward, and went straight for the what? Inward. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to what? Believe him inwardly. Regardless of what you have or do not have outwardly. You got to get that. You got to understand that. He believed in the Lord. Wasn't even circumcised. But he believed in the Lord. All that he had out of it didn't even matter anymore. But it says he, bore, he believed God. Now watch this here. Verse 6, still in, in Genesis 15, 6. And he believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted it to him. Gave him a credit. It was counted to him for righteousness. righteousness. Yes. He was on the same page with the Lord. Amen. Because he believed. Even though he was childless, hadn't even started yet, he still Believe God. Yes. That's what creditability with God is all about. Faith enough to participate in the vision God gives you. Amen. You want God's help? Then you got to go after God's vision yes. for your life. Yes, God. And, 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 and you know, and we know the story of Abram. Him, him and his wife, they tried to help God out. Produce Ishmael. But now, that wasn't a, that wasn't the one, was it? No. God's plan was to use a hundred-year-old man and a ninety-year-old woman by the name of Sarah. To begin the journey. And if you ever you know the story, eventually that's what happened. What? Yes. Yeah. They produced Isaac. Thus began the process. But you have Isaac, Jacob, Israel. Then his 12 soldiers. So I said, all that to say this, all that to say this, all that to say this, as we close this out. Abram faced physical limitations, but he held on to his faith in God. Amen. Don't let outward substance fool you. Because you are still, we are still limited in our capacity. Yeah. It takes faith. Faith. And Abraham's faith, and let me just share this with you. And then um, we're, we're going to uh, uh, Romans chapter, uh, Romans chapter 4 here. Now, this is a good chapter for you to read. I'm not going to read it all, but I would encourage you to go back and read it. Because in Romans chapter 4, uh, Paul, he talks about Abraham and the uh, consequences surrounding his faith. And he brings up the point of Abraham. Abram believed God when he was not circumcised. He, talk, he talks about all that in that chapter, Romans chapter 4. 
So I would encourage you to, uh, to, to read that. And and I'll be and have a have a concordance or a Bible dictionary with you mm -hmm. as you as you're reading Romans chapter four because it will give you some good insight on that. But what, what I want to close out with you here is right over here uh, in verse number nineteen. Verse number nineteen, right there where it says in Romans one, and being not weak in faith, mm -hmm. Abraham says he, but he the press a pronoun for Abraham. Consider not his own body now being dead. Now, what he mean by that is basically, you know, he was he was he was beyond the the age physically of uh, being able to produce seed. But there was prime opportunity for God to step in and do what and to produce, wasn't it? Yeah. When he look at what it said when he was about a hundred years old. He wasn't weak in his faith. He wasn't weak in his faith. He did not let his limitation, so he thought, stop it. Neither did he consider the deadness of his wife's womb. She was old as well, beyond child and child buried it. But he didn't let that he didn't let that stop him, did he? No. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was what? Strong in faith, giving what? Giving glory to God. Even when even when him and Sarah they, they tried to detour and help God out, they still got back on track. Amen. He staggered not, but was strong in faith, giving what glory to God. And being fully persuaded, Abram was fully persuaded that what he, what God had promised him way back in Genesis, that God was what? Able to perform it. Yes. And therefore, it was counted to him for what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Yes. Now, it was not written for his sake only, but it was written for, and that it was accounted for him, but verse 24. But it was written for who? Us, Us also. Us. But you got to know yes. the story. Yes. To whom it shall be counted if yes. we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Amen. We cannot continue to focus and depend on our outward. We must focus on faith back. Credibility with God. Yes. And so then, my hope is that utilizing Abram, that we see that we will have limitations in life. Amen. But that we must be fully persuaded that when we believe in him that raised Jesus from the dead now, yes. that God is able to perform that which he Amen. had promised. Amen. But if you don't know what he has promised you, <laughs> you gotta know what, yeah, that's, what, that's what relationship with him comes in. Yes, sir. So he can let you in on some things. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you can tune Jesus. some other people out and be able to hear his voice. His voice. Some of you, you're getting ready to embark upon a new stage in life, and you've you got to learn how to shift your thinking. You've got to learn how to shift your focus. And step it up. Step it up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let me, let me use myself as an example. Yesterday, I was, I was in the office, and I was reconciling some uh, files. And when I reconcile my files, I always like to keep a uh, an extra backup just in case that something happens to the, uh, to the computer. And so all my files, and don't laugh, I have, I keep, well, some of my files I keep on a floppy disk. Yep. I see yep, this is three and a half floppy disks that I've, that I've had for quite some time. You know, and, and floppy disks, I'm sure some of you are thinking again, like, yeah, I have floppy disks. Mm -hmm. And so I went to back up the file, and it said the disk was full. I'm 
wait a minute, how many things be full? I got the same number of files up here. But what I have to realize and understand that as technology advances, because see, Windows 98 is not the same as Windows 10. Windows 95 is not the same as Windows 10. And so that there are oftentimes enhancements to those programs that take up more space. So I was sitting there, I was sitting there, I was trying to come up with, nah, I've got to get, I've got to find me a flop in this so I can save these files. And I was, and at that moment, I was becoming prehistoric in my thinking. And, 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 and the Lord said, why don't you just use your um, flash drive? Right. <laughs> I sat there for 15 minutes. Trying to figure out what can I do with that floppy disk? Just use your flash drive. And so I, and I forgot all kind of hack a flash drive. So I put it over there in my file, pull the flash drive out, put it into the computer there. Right. And the same file that I was sitting there trying to wrestle with on the floppy drive, I had them right there on my flash drive. And I, I saw that and said, this, you know, sometimes we just need to step it up and advance our thinking. Sometimes we make things more difficult than they have to be. And I have forgotten all about that. I had already saved my five. I had already made the way. But sometimes the, the devil, he wants us to be, well, I don't want to say the devil, but sometimes life wants us to be so preoccupied that we forget about the way has already been made elsewhere. Amen. Oh, but I said, I have to say this, you know, some of you, you're entering into a, a different level of fun. Well, you're going to have to step it up. You're going to have to deviate from your floppy drive mentality and, and advance into a flash drive mentality. All, and, and so all, that, all that simply means is, you know, yes. you, you have to learn how to advance okay. when, when it's time to, to advance. Amen. Now, going back to our original point, credibility with God. Yes. That's what we're talking about. And I and I pray that we've said something that will resonate with you and stick with you and, and let you under, let you know that you know outward this outward substance is no substitute for inward faith. Yes. It's not. Because outward substance is limited. Limited. But faith in God. There is no limit to what your faith in God can do for you. Because he told Abe, you won't even be able to number the count your seed. So it's hard to believe that that was a man that started out childless when the Lord said, you won't even be able to count. But then he started out he couldn't count because he did not have. There's nothing wrong with starting out when you do not have. Amen. But just having faith enough to believe that God can help. Credit to you what you need in order to do his vision for you. Yeah. Father, we thank you on today. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word. God, I pray something that was said to motivate and to encourage the, the heart, the mind of the listener. God, I pray that this word was relevant. God, that it was relevant and that it was spoken in a way that will challenge not just them, but challenge me also. Because we all need to be challenged in some form or fashion. Lord, we all need your word to help move us, to help. Ahead of us. Father, I pray for, for the one that's not saved on today. If you're out there, you're not saved. You don't know who Jesus is as your Lord and personal Savior. But you want to give your heart to the Lord because that's where it starts. It starts with faith in knowing who Jesus is. If that's you and you don't know who Jesus is, if you want to give your heart to the Lord, just repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I heard your word on today. I believe that you came, that you died for my sins, that you were buried, but you rose again, and that you live now and forevermore. And I believe that. And I receive you into my heart, even now I receive you into my mind as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life even now. Make me anew, make me afresh. 
Make me acceptable before the eyes of God. I receive you now, Lord, into my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then we believe that you have given your life to the Lord. But it's important that you grow with that, that you yes. grow upon that, that you don't just make the declaration out of your mouth, but then you have to put some action plans in place, which means you have to go and find a local church that teaches the Bible as it is. They don't sugarcoat and they teach it like it is. And become a part so that you can grow and learn, and that you develop that relationship with Him. That's so important that you do that. We invite you to continue to, to tune in with us. You can come visit us here at the South Rocky Mountain Community Center, 719 Recreation Drive here in Rocky Mountain, every Sunday at 9. But find somewhere where you can go and learn and be taught the Word of God. We thank you. We thank you. And Lord, for those of us who are saved, God, continue to watch over us, continue to help us to grow, continue to help us to do that which you've called us to do. If we've fallen off the wagon, if we've backslidden, then Lord, help us to get back up. Because there's much work to be done. It's not over with yet. But we know that there's still much work to do. And that is our cry to you on today, Lord, is to continue to give us what we need so that we can further your vision for our life, so that we can further your plan, your purpose for our life in the earth. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless, to him be dominion, honor, and glory. Let everyone say amen. 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 Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. We'll see you next time.